Moving right along, we're going to get into the floor plan now and modeling some walls on each of the individual floors. In order to do that, rather than create a sketch and create the center lines for all of our walls, uh, I already have a DXF that represents more or less the layout that I want to use. So we're going to follow the same steps that we did previously to insert a 2D drawing into our model. We're going to create a, a document using the manage document command. And now we're going to create the 2D view directly uh, in the same dialog box. We create the 2D view, and since I uploaded the floor plan, you see I have a preview of the geometry that I'm going to insert, the 2D geometry. I select the level where I want to insert this drawing, and then in my 2D preview, I'm gonna move those white dots again to snap to the geometry where I want to place them in my 3D model. We'll start by snapping to a, a couple of corners in the drawing, and make sure that they are exactly where we want them. And now we'll grab the 3D representation of that drawing, move it into place, and again using those white dots that we set in the preview, we'll snap them to our geometry in the 3D. Uh, it takes a little getting used to and a little practice to make sure that you are, are snapping in the right location or you're navigating correctly. We see that this drawing, it's not exactly the same geometry that I've been working on and it's not lining up exactly where I want it to so I'm gonna modify in the preview where my my reference point positions are and reset them in 3d so that it's it's aligned a bit better at least now if I was working on a production project I would probably take a little more effort to make sure that these are if not perfect as close to perfect as possible but for the sake of this of this demonstration we're gonna get it close and we'll, we'll work from, from here. So I've got my drawing in my model. Uh, again, I'm working in the driver interiors because I'm going to use the, the, create the walls and things inside this interior shape. I'll hide some slabs so that it's easier to navigate around my model. And now in order to use the geometry from that floor plan that I just inserted into my drawing, I need to extract the lines you know, extract the lines like we already have in previous stages. Extract the lines from that layout. And in this case, the easiest way to do it is just do a trap select. So activate my extract geometry command, trap select all of the lines from that layout, and then change them to exact geometry because I, I don't need polyhedral for this, for the following steps. Compared to stairs and handrails, modeling walls is a relatively straightforward affair. Uh, we click on the wall command. We give a, we can give either a solid as an input, and that solid, if we had selected that, would represent the overall geometry of the wall itself. Or you can give it a profile as input. Profile can be a line, polyline, curve, uh, arc, any type of, of wireframe geometry. And then we have options on location of the wall relative to that center line uh, and the height limits, so the top and bottom of the wall. Another really convenient component of the wall feature is priority. And so priority, whether it's above or below the adjoining wall, is going to set which wall pushes or pulls the uh, neighboring wall to resolve the corner condition. And again, you see that by default, walls are set to 100 priority until you start changing it, and then it's going to keep the previous setting. Uh, but it's it's really any integer whole number, the walls will resolve the corners on their own. So if you so you can pick any number between I guess one and infinity, and depending on the neighboring wall's priority value, the resolution of the corner will happen automatically. Now we'll go through and we'll very quickly select all of the lines from our extracted geometry, click on the wall command, we'll get all of our walls for this for this floor. By selecting the walls first and then clicking on the wall command, all of the lines that we had previously selected will be entered into the input field for the wall creation. Then if we want to change the priority on some of these so that they push past the, the neighboring adjoining walls, we can select them, multi-edit, and you see now we can set the priority, for example, 
to make these push past their neighboring walls. If two adjoining walls are equal, you'll get a mitering, and if uh, one is greater than the other, uh, it will be a push-pull relationship. In addition, if you need to add a wall and you don't have a line for it, you can right-click in the input field, insert wireframe, and that will shortcut you to the dialog box to create a line. When you make that line and commit, it will automatically fill the input to the wall command as that line, and that line will then be used as the input to the wall. Once we have walls in the model, it's time to start adding some doors. So to do that, we click on the door command and then select a wall as an input. And then we have three different ways to position the door on the wall. We can position the door from the edge of the door to a specific object on the wall. By default, it's going to position it from the extremity of the wall. We can also position from that reference geometry or the extremity of the wall to the center of the door or we can position the door by ratio between two elements along that wall. So in this case, for the first couple of doors, we're gonna position from uh, relative to the edge of the wall, the extremity of the edge of the wall. And the third door here, let's do by ratio between two objects, let's see what that looks like. So we select our two walls by ratio, it sets us in the middle of the, of the wall between those two walls. But rather than that, we're going to go and change the location from the middle of the door relative to an adjacent wall. And again, we'll change the orientation of that door. Next, we'll, we'll start positioning uh, the doors on various walls and make sure that they're all oriented correctly. This is a relatively straightforward process once you get into the groove. We'll just keep placing doors, select a wall, position the door on the wall, make sure that the orientation and opening direction is all good, and then we'll click OK. Here's another tip. As with most commands that you want to repeat in Katia, it's easiest to double click on the button in the toolbar, which means that when you click OK on the command, it's going to automatically relaunch that command the previously used command. So in this case, I've double clicked on the door command. And now every time I commit the door by clicking OK, it's going to relaunch the command for me. In some instances, working in top of view in more of a floor plan view is going to be easier. So that's why I've gone into parallel view mode and I'm looking at the model from above because placing doors in this orientation is just going to be easier and faster. Another parameter that I didn't talk about yet is you can set the elevation. Uh, you can either uh, input a plane to set the elevation or you can add a threshold height, which is going to lift the door off of the wall. So I didn't do it here, but thinking forward, I could come back and edit, do a multi-edit on all of these doors to raise the door up off of the slab and set the elevation at, say, the finished floor height. It's probably something I, I should have done and I'll likely do before moving on to the next step. But in any event, I'm placing all the doors, changing the orientation, and now I'm going to rotate back into 3D. Let's say there should be eventually elevators here. This is an elevator bay. Uh, so instead of using a, a swing door, we're going to do sliding doors here. And now this is the first time we're going to see the parameters at work that define the size of the door itself. So I've changed the door type to a sliding double and I've changed the width to accommodate the, the elevator size and now I'm just going to position these sliding doors into my model. This is the first time I'm mentioning it but the door parameters that you see shown actually could be replaced if you had an object type that contained a UDF that you could insert into this door when you're creating the door. That's a more advanced topic but it's an option there because you see every door comes with an axis system and so you can model your own door UDF and insert that into an object type and then use that object type to populate your door features, either by instantiating the UDF contained in the object type or using the change level of development command to instantiate the engineering template.